Hi, this is Jenny. Thanks for stopping by my channel. The video today is all about gel plate printing and mixed media art. Thanks for stopping by. The gel plate I'm using today is this 8 by 10 inch Jelly Arts gel printing plate. It is almost the same size as your typical printer paper. I have decided to use my Distress paints today. I have two greens, Old Olive and Mowed Lawn, two blues, Broken China and Tumbled Glass, two yellows, Squeezed Lemonade and Mustard Seed, and I pulled out two whites, Picket Fence and Antique Linen. When you are at the end of your jelly printing process, you will need a white ink to pull the rest of the paint off of your jelly plate. I also have two brayers. And don't do what I did there and put your brayer on its rolling side. That's really bad for the brayer, actually. I have created some die cuts that I'm going to use both as stencils in this video and as art journal ephemera in the next part of the video. So I have that dress form in the dress and these leaves. I also have some mixed media pages that I've cut down to be the size of my art journal book. Now I think that that's probably not the best thing to do because they're smaller than my plate. So sometimes there are some edges, but I will work around that. You will also need some scrap paper for rolling off the brayer and because I am using pages slightly smaller than my gel plate, I will need something to pick up the edges. Okay, so my Distress Paints, um, the sponge dauber part is completely dried out. So I am, I am pouring or dumping the paint onto the jelly plate. And sometimes I get a little bit more than I need, but whatever, we're going to make it work, right? So I am mixing these two greens. I don't want to mix them to make a third color. I want there to be dimension, um, you know, highlights, lowlights, different colors, because I am going to be creating the background for an art journal page. So you want there to be lots of color, lots of visual texture, lots of physical texture. I am placing these leaf die cuts down on my, my, the painted part of my jelly plate. And this project was an intentional printing. Um, when I was perusing through, or perusing, I guess that's the right word, <laughs> perusing through Pinterest one night before I went to bed, I saw a lot of jelly printing coming up in my Pinterest feed. Okay, so back to what I'm doing here. I'm taking the, my, my mixed media paper, my, my art journal page, and putting it down first, then a piece of scrap paper to pick up the edges. And you'll see there's kind of green on the edge of that. But here is the first print. And, okay, secrets out, first print, it's not usually your favorite one. It's what comes next and what you do with that, that A print, that first print, that makes it better. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some blue paint on top of the green paint and on top of those die cuts. Yes, on top of the... Great thing about gel plate printing is that you add layer on layer on layer to develop that visual and physical texture. Okay, so back to what um, this process is. I wanted to see if I could create intentional layers with my gel, pl um, gel plate. Um, I have used my gel plate before with colors, with stencils, but not in trying to create an actual image. I, I learned a couple of things in this process. I learned that you can actually use your gel plate to create a specific image, not just an abstract background. I also learned that I did it in the wrong order. <laughs> so more on that later. I intend to redo this type of project in the correct order, and I will explain what I mean by that. But basically, it's like when you are doing a one-layer scene card, and you have to mask off from the top down. The thing you want in the front has to be the thing you do first. Sorry, I just forgot to mute my phone and shut my office door so you can hear the clock. Eh, sorry. 
Okay, another thing that I thought I was being so cool about is using my pokey tool to pick those die cuts up off my jelly plate. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I thought for some reason I could avoid getting paint all over my fingernails. Guess what? You can't. You're going to get paint all over everything. And I did this project knowing I needed to repaint my nails anyway. So I am not sure what I was doing. But also I did find out later, later sorry, that I poked my jelly, jelly plate. That's not great. Okay, you don't want to be putting holes in your jelly plate. Gratefully, it was little and it didn't go all the way through. It didn't, it, it's not a huge deal, but I don't recommend doing what I'm doing here by using that pokey tool. Just put on gloves. If you don't want your fingers dirty, put on gloves or wait till it's time to do your nails again and do, do the art, do the jelly printing before you do your nails. Okay, so you watched me there pull a second print with that first sheet of paper and I am adding the dress form on top of the blue and on top of the green. I have removed the leaves and again, I'm putting two colors of paint down and not mixing them, not, not mixing them, just kind of rolling them together. And then I'll take that scrap paper off to the right and clean off, clean the loose paint off my brayer. Yeah, see, don't do that. Don't do it, Jenny. Don't do it, Jenny. Don't do it, Jenny. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Anyway, <laughs> here is another piece of mixed media paper and my scrap paper. And I am just using my hands, holding one hand to hold the paper in place and one hand to kind of put some firm, moderate to firm pressure down. Um, and here is the second pole. And that is starting to look really pretty. Lots of texture, lots of color, lots of open and blank space, which is the cool thing about gel printing, you can get some really cool looking textures. Um, it is an, a neat way to create backgrounds for cards, for art journals, for mixed media projects. And it really is kind of fun to do just if you have nothing to do, you know, if, if you don't have a specific project, if you've lost your mojo, if you don't know what you want to create, pull out your gel press and see what you can do, what you can create. Um, I have added the dress die cut to my gel print, mm, gel plate. I keep calling it a gel print. It's a gel plate. And now I'm adding the yellow paint. I keep wanting to say ink as well. It's not ink, it's paint. Anyways, so I'm adding my yellows down because I do want this dress to be yellow. I want it to stand out from the background not blend in so much. So here we go with our little brayer again. And I think this little brayer is, uh, gosh, I think it's the Ranger brayer. I'm pretty sure I bought it at like, um, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I think it's the Ranger brayer. The other one is a larger brayer that I purchased off Amazon. Um, they both have uses. I use mostly this, the smaller brayer for putting the, the paint around and the larger brayer right here for pressure. But again, when you're storing your brayer, put them on their backside on their stand so that you don't unintentionally create a flat space on your brayer roller. So here we're going to pull that print again. Don't use the picky tool. Don't do it, Jenny. Don't do it. And look, you can see that there's that opening, but also you can see the blues and the greens peeking out behind that yellow. So here is where I have realized I may have done this in the wrong order, but I'm going to continue. I have pulled out the, I think this is antique linen. And one thing I noticed on when I was doing this project is some of these distress paints are much runnier than others. And I don't know if that is just my paints. They're all stored in the same place. I bought them all at about the same time. Um, Joanne's was having a sale one time, so I bought a whole bunch at once. So I'm not sure if it is the color that makes the, the consistency different or if it's maybe I didn't shake it enough because it was you know white so I didn't have to mix the pigment. I don't know. So here I've covered the whole plate in this antique linen um, paint and I'm going to pull another print. Now, one thing I, another thing I learned in this process was that mixed media paper pulls the print well, 
but it doesn't clean the plate the way that regular old printer paper, copy paper pulls it. If you put down your copy paper and let it sit long enough, oh, look how pretty that is. All the striations and colors and shapes and outlines. Ooh, so pretty. Love it. Sorry, <laughs> I was distracted watching this video as I voice over for you. <laughs> um, anyway, copy paper will pull nearly all of the paint off of your, your um, gel plate. And I know a lot of mixed media artists don't bother cleaning their plate more than that. Because if there's a little left over, it just adds another layer of texture or grunge. I am not that person. I do have to clean mine off. It's a little bit of a an OCD thing, which if you saw my desk in my office right now, you would totally laugh that I have OCD about cleaning things, but it's selective. <laughs> I have selective cleaning OCD, or maybe I have ADHD OCD. You know, it, it, it gets fixated on this one thing and, and the rest of it is... Uh, Anyway, <laughs> I have put the dress form die cut down and the leaves on top of it and then the dress on top of that, which is not exactly the order I intend to put the finished product in, but I just, at this point, am experimenting with layers and texture. And because I have so much of that white paint, there's a lot of liquid left on that gel plate. So I can, I still have the ability to get quite an opaque um, pull or print off of this next pole. So now you can see there, there's the green, there's the blue, there's the yellow, you can see the leaves, you can see the dress, you can kind of see the dress form in there still. And that I think is the, the print I actually end up using on my art journal page. So here I am going to add a little bit of the other white that I pulled out. I don't, um, I don't remember if this one is antique linen or old um, picket fence. But you can see it is also really runny. And I'm like, what was I thinking? Oh, so much white paint. Yeah, it's going to take a few pulls to get a nice print with this much paint. The, the trick, I think, when you're using acrylic paint on your gel plate is only enough to cover the plate. You don't want it this soupy looking. And you can tell there's a lot of paint on that gel plate. Now, you, you can't. You can't miss it. There's a lot of paint there, but you know what? We're just going to go with it. We're going to put this, this piece of mixed media paper down. We are going to use our hands to, to um, put some pressure on there and, and see what we can come up with here. I must be looking for my scrap paper because that one I had used all the sides on. So, Hey, here's another piece of paper laying on my desk. Hope I didn't need that. Pretty sure it was a receipt for some, stamps I purchased from W plus nine. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, well, whatever. We're making pretty art. We don't care what we're doing with the garbage on our desk, right? <laughs> okay. So that took up a lot of the white paint. Um, you can see on that, that mixed media paper right there off to the left, you cannot see much of anything except the white and my dress die cut stuck to it. So now I am going to use my fingers and go ahead and pull all of those die cuts off. I'm just setting them on that other, the, the print up there in the corner. Not a big deal. More texture, more layers, more yummy goodness. Um, I love watching Sean Petit's um, YouTube channel because she talks about her mixed media art like she's making cookies or brownies or something. She, it's yummy. It's delicious. It's, I, I love listening to her describe her art. <laughs> so I am taking one of those first prints, the first poles that I created that were very thick and opaque and not very, um, textured and adding this layer to it. And this is how you take your, your first poles, your, your, your A prints that are not really usually the best and make them better. You add another layer to them and that's what gel printing is. It's adding layers, it's adding texture, it's creating that visual um, shadowing and highlights and lowlights. And it just is what makes mixed media awesome looking. And look at that. That is gorgeous. I love that print. You can see the outlines of the leaves without seeing the leaves. You can see the dress form. You can see the dress and it is just pretty. That is a pretty print. That is something I will use. I am going to take this one that is still kind of wet and soupy with the white paint and put it back down 
and see what I can get. Typically speaking, a wet page doesn't, doesn't do a lot with pulling a nice print, but we'll see. You know, like I said, we're, we're experimenting here. I'm, I'm trying to see if I can take this image in my head and have it come out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Now that pull, that print has more texture on it. So the next thing I decided to use was this dictionary page. I went to Goodwill a few years ago and bought a dictionary that was already completely falling out of its cover and out of its spine. I didn't want to destroy a usable book. I have issues with that because I love books. But this one was already falling apart, so I can tear it apart to use it in art, right? And that thinner paper pulls up more of that ink, or that paint, rather. So now I am going to take this light blue, the um, Broken China, I think is the lighter blue that I used. And I'm going to dump a little bit on there. I hope it's just a little bit, just a tiny bit. Hopefully that's all that comes out. I don't, I'm trying to not tip it up too high, and oi, a little bit did not come out. <laughs> Anyways, I am going to roll that light blue paint around on my gel plate and put a piece of paper down. And at this point, I'm just trying to clean my plate. I don't want to just take a baby wipe and wipe all that luscious paint off. I want to pull it onto a paper that is some way usable. So now I have this dictionary page again, and I will put it down on top of that blue. And I'm going to slide it to the corner. Don't know why I did that but I did. So then I will take some of these other um, pages that I have printed on and pull up the edges. You know, that means that those prints will have corners and edges on them that aren't really, um, don't look that great, but they can be cut down. They can be layered on top of again. It, it can be um, mitigated to still use that, that print. Now, one thing I will say is that this is not a clean process. <laughs> Be prepared to get your table, your fingers, your hands, you know, don't wear your best clothes. If you are even moderately a messy crafter, because this paint just kind of goes everywhere. You can see on my desktop there, there's some splatters. There's some, um, paint a little bit everywhere. And I'm showing you here on these pages that there's now an edge which I don't love, but again, it's fixable. This is mixed media, it's fixable. We're not going for perfection, we're going for awesome. And now that dictionary page is covered with greens and yellows and blues, and I still have all this paint on my gel plate. So I am going to take one of the prints and lay it back down and see how much of that wet paint I can pull off the gel plate. I'm trying to now use my dryer prints the ones where the paint has had more time to dry, just to see if I can get more of that paint off the gel plate and onto my prints. And that pulled up a little bit more. It added another layer of the light blue, which is really cool looking, but I'm kind of stuck now. There's no more paint is gonna come off this gel plate. So I am taking my white. And again, I don't know if this is antique linen or old paper or picket fence, sorry. I had picket fence and old linen, antique linen. Oi. Anyway, I'm not sure which one this is, but this is how I am going to, oh yeah. I said that out loud multiple times. This is how I am going to clean oh, my plate. <laughs> and now I have made yet another soupy mess with my very runny paint. Um, I did after this project, go and purchase flip tops for all of my distress paint. Because in addition to taking more time, which was okay, I was just playing, but I also used a lot of product that maybe I would not have used. So yeah, I did go ahead and buy the replacement flip top caps for all of my distress paint after this project, because that was a lot of white paint. Instead of using paper though, I am going to use this deli sheet this deli paper. It's like wax paper without the wax on it. So funny story about this paper. When my now 23 year old was in middle school, her science teacher needed wax paper for a project. So I went to our big club box store and purchased these boxes of wax paper sheets. 
Um, they sent them back because I sent in more than they could use in a year. I'm still using this wax paper. So yeah, she's 23 and that was like seventh or eighth grade. <laughs> it lasts forever. <laughs> the cool thing about jelly paper is look at the texture on that jelly print, that jelly plate now. How cool is that going to be on another, another print on another project? Boy, here come my kids in the house. I hope they don't come in here loud. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull that, that paint off the jelly plate and see what we get. Hopefully we get something that is super yummy. I totally can't remember how this one turned out. Isn't that funny? I have been working on editing the video footage for this project for quite a while now. But oh, look how yummy that is. You can't really see the dress form really or the dress or the leaves, but oh, look how cool that is. Okay, so now I'm going to take one of these other, these other prints, the dictionary page, and I'm gonna put that down and see how much more um, paint I can get off of this plate. And most of it has now come off. If I wanted to really clean it up without going to town with the baby wipe, I could add a little bit <laughs> of white paint and use um, a lightweight paper like copy paper. And that would pull it all up. If you let it sit and dry for a good 15 or 20 minutes, it really does pull most of the paint off of the gel plate. But I am just going to take what is left here and clean it up with a baby wipe. So if you like this video, um, come back for the next part and I will show you the mixed media journal or the um, art journal page that I made with all of these, these prints. These are the prints that I pulled today. Um, I will also have some pictures, I think, at the end of this video. Do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't. Subscribe to my page, like my page, share my page, leave me a comment. YouTube says that all interaction is good interaction. So even if you didn't like this, let me know. Thanks so much for stopping by. And if you want to see the finished product, be sure and head over to the next video. I am going to upload both segments on the same day. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.